regarding royalties and and whether or not I uh, and how much I charge and making deals, a young engineer who has no credits is given a value by his pedigree and the people that he comes from. When I was a young engineer, I came from a place called Sigma Sound Studios and, and that had a pedigree because of the people who started it and worked there and I trained under. And as you make your way into the marketplace, the success of the products that you make and of course the aesthetic quality of the products you make in, in our world because it's an aesthetic based artistic uh, marketplace, we are valued at those prices. Uh, and and there, are, there are other people in that marketplace. Um, so my colleagues are, and I, price the market based on, on what we do and what we offer and how well we do it and how well we communicate and how well, how well we do our jobs and how successful the products we make are. And I use the word products for music, but of course it's not the best word for music, but we are making products. Mm. But in the case of music, it has changed as a product because it is less and less a product in and of itself. It is less a product that is purchased directly by the listener directly by the person who is going to use it. Immediately, that changes the value of the product itself, the music, and everyone who made that product. The artist, the producer, the songwriter, the engineers, and the record company. So all of a sudden, our value is now in flux because the marketplace has said, music is no longer a product in and of itself. It is an enhancement to other products, which it always has been, but that's always been a secondary part of the music business. And, and it's valued differently now because it's valued based on brands, um, the brand of Beyonce, the brand of Rihanna, uh, the brand of, of Katy Perry. How that affects me as the, a part of the production team is dramatic. So whether it's, you know, whether you're just starting in the business or have been in the business as long as I have, it is affecting us dramatically. And, and we're still in flux about how that works. When it comes to royalties, I, I do charge a royalty for my work. There, there are some exceptions, but very few. But that's for me. Um, my colleagues might take more up front because they feel that that's the right thing for, to do for them. Maybe I'm a little slow in the uptake, you know, and I'm still working off the old model, thinking that, you know, I, sales are gonna be worth something to me, I, I don't know. Royalties have decreased substantially. And on the records that I've made in the last two years, three years, the royalties are just a trickle especially at the royalty that I'm getting, which is just a small percentage. I, I try to make my decisions based on the music first. My decisions about, you know, am I going to take the job? How many songs am I willing to do at the price they're offering? Can I pay my bills with the price they're offering? How can I make up the compensation if they're offering less than my full rate? How can I make that up in royalties? So is that one point, two points? Uh, how does that work? Um, a lot of this, obviously, I leave up to my manager because he does it every day. But he and I discuss it all the time because the music business is moving so fast that we have to keep up. Um, but it, it is a very difficult thing to do. And for young engineers, Again, making the, the decision based on the music, I think is the smart way to go from the beginning. Make it, make it start from that and then make your decisions based on the people and whether or not they value what you do. Because if they value what you, what you do, then perhaps when they make more money, they will pay you more money. But if you value yourself very little, then they probably won't pay you more money. Um, but it, when, it, when it comes to royalties, 
it's a, it's a very difficult decision because not only have royalties become almost valueless, the budgets have be, have decreased substantially. So there's no money in in the royalty, and there's no money in the budget. So how do we make that work? Um, is is again based on like any business, we have to figure out how can we do it for less, you know? And uh, how can we, how can we, do we, you know, I no longer use a commercial studio, that's one way. And a lot of my colleagues don't use a commercial facility anymore because it's, it's too expensive. So they can take the money that they would have spent. I mean, I still pay rent, but I don't pay daily rent, which is very, very high. So my rent has decreased, so I'm able to charge a lower rate, but still make the same money, that sort of thing. And you just compensate over time, and hopefully the market is going to get stronger, and music will be valued higher over time.